Can we on the light? light. So you want the light on? Yeah, oh, just, just over there behind that water box. Yep. On the left? The left one. Other one? That one on the wall, right? Mm. Let me try this one. I thought it was on. Yeah. Hi guys, it's Jag here from Jag Aquatics, and we are at Nature's Aquarium. Uh, it's a workshop too. We will be planting this beautiful scape that we did yesterday. I uh, just want a confirmation that if anyone can tell that you guys can listen to me clearly, we will have Steve here from Nature's Aquarium, and uh, he will help us, you know, to discuss the plants. Um, and Steve is here. Hello. Uh, hello, everyone, again, and. Uh, our plan with this, Planting. I'm pretty sure that you're happy with where it is. Uh, we, we did switch on the filters. We fill it all up. Water is super clear. I'm really happy. And nothing was um, nothing was broken or, you know, uh, fell apart. We'll, we'll try so, not to break it. Yeah. And uh, the way we're going to plant it, we'll make sure that we don't uh, you know, touch these uh, diff, uh, diff foods. Uh, but also the way I plant, uh, the way I plan the whole scape is we have a lot of space at the back to, to use tweezers and plant various plants. So our plan is to use, we have a big bucket of um, you know plants here. I'm not sure if you can see that, but it's, uh, you know, it's a lot of plants. We have Bacopa, we have Limnophilia. Some really lovely ones. Yeah, Rotala Volici. Um, so there is some nice linden yeah, species. That some they, green gecko. Yes, green gecko also, beautiful ones. So we will be going through as I plant, I will go through various plants and really healthy stock. And again, we still have promotion on the, all these beautiful plants. Uh, the shelves are full, so do come in and buy some. Jack, one, Jack one. rated the plants, but yes, I but... don't think he even had a dig. There's plenty there. Uh, there are plenty there. So yeah, we will get started and uh, we'll have some team members to help us you know, uh, from Nature's Aquarium to plant me. Uh, objective is that if we can plant it all within an hour, I have to catch a flight on time, yep. so uh, let's get started. Let's get and thanks, guys. Yeah, cool. Thank you.
So guys, we have a styrograin ribbon, really, really beautiful plant. Uh, it's grown, um, it's grown in a, I mean, if you look at the shop, all the, all the plants are, some are grown in rock wool, some in gravel. So this is in gravel in a nice small tub, but really big quantity. So I will use that in the four, I mean, bit of a foreground, like you can see behind the rocks. So here I will be using styrograin ribbon. Um, I will be a bit using here and, um, you know, you will see how, how different sections are going to be used in the front. We will put Monte Carlo and, um, some Japanese hair grass that team will be helping me to plant also. And um, yeah, let's get started. Yeah. So that's Georgia. She's gonna, she is she coming a bit closer. Um, she's one of the team members at Nature's Aquarium. She will be helping me to plant as quickly as possible. Um, so yeah, Georgia, we're gonna, we will be, we, we need to plant styrogyne ripen in at this position. Right, so really bulky. I think we have enough, and uh, we will plant here and on the right side, a uh, little bit here and bit whatever is left on that side. But what you can do, you can take the left side if you want, yeah. and I can plant on the right side. And there is a tweezer. So yeah, these are really nice tweezers from uh, from Seacom, really pointy ones. If you want to get, and it, it makes life easier to plant, uh, like you will see here soon. So I just took out the plant and you know, it has nice root system. You can see really healthy plants, uh, wash them up a bit and then you can just start planting. And I normally, what I do, I take a little bit, you know, small bunch and uh, cut cut the extra roots because they will they will grow again. And also it's easy to, easy to plant and it's a bit neat. Um, you can have three to four branches. Um, I like to keep the numbers odd. It looks more natural, mix, mix up the numbers, either even or odd. It just looks natural in different bunch. And um, yeah, that's how I will plant it. Use the tweezer to hold it and just go in. And because of the tweezers, it becomes, life becomes really easy to plant. And uh, depending on, yeah, there you go. I think I'm hitting the rock there somewhere. Just wait. You can help me, George, with the plants. I will plant first section. I think there is a bit of a wood below it. That's why. Yeah, this is nice. Yeah, so there is a bit of a rock that's underneath it. So I didn't realize that. You have to find the right position too. This is all rock there. Yeah, there you go. yeah this is nice blessed plot. All right, you can just give me a good play. So yeah, if you're using tweezer, it's pretty easy to plant like I'm doing here. You can give me a big bunch, uh, you know, that's the best way. So guys, I don't have anything here behind my computer. So if you have any questions, we will answer it very soon. It will be having his nice coffee. So he'll be back in 10 minutes. <laughs> All right, just keep giving me the yeah. 
Just divide the bunch into two and I will plant it quickly. <clears throat> I can put it there if you want. Yeah, if you can help me there, I can actually quickly plant, then that would be good. So I'm just scattering it around a bit because in nature, things don't grow exactly symmetrical, uh, but there is a still will be a bit of, uh, you know, symmetry around the around planting. Perfect. So the way the design is done, so I have I have a bit of a soil on this side, um, in all the uh, all the bit of all grooves around the rocks, and um, to make it look natural, plant it next to the rocks and always create those spaces. And you can plant at an angle. So plant is, you know, like you can see the crown of uh, the plant is facing towards us. It is going planted at the angle. So it looks really nice from the top. Thank you. So I'm just checking where the gaps are, where I can plant it, the soil is enough. Thank you. You can give me that also. So. So do we have Rotala Pearl? Okay, cool. Well, if you can get that. <clears throat> so I'm thinking this is this is gecko, right? Crip. So this is really beautiful size, and I'm thinking to put it in this area, a little bit shady area there. Uh, crips can grow. Uh, on a bit of a medium light and I think this is a really nice place uh, because it was a bit of a dark spot you know have a contrast with all this area and behind it we can put a really nice bright plant so again I'm just removing that rock wool and if a little bit is left there it's not a big deal I'm trying to remove it all and then plant it there. In the background, I'm thinking to, you know, we use Rotala Red. Uh, we have Rotala Volici. Uh, we have some Bacopa species, which are really nice once they grow. Uh, Limnophilia, those kind of plants are going to go at the back. So, yeah, these will have some big leaves and you can see, you know, they will cover here really nice this spot and then bright stem plants behind it. So this is a beautiful Bacopa species um, and the colors, you know, you can see uh, it has a really nice bronze color to the leaves. Uh, we will be adding that at the back at that section and uh, 
in front of that i will be putting some kind of you know rotala or a bit orangish plant the red plant my plan is to have um, rotala blood red here and a bit red plants there so on that side more orangish and same with on this right side so orange bit of green and then in more center areas or you know where the focal points are we will keep the red plants like really red plants like rotala blood red <clears throat> So here again, it's it's quite a nice height there. I'm just gonna cut it at uh, you know a little bit of roots. I'm gonna get rid of them. You can cut it neatly with the uh, with the scissors, but I find you know even if even I if you snap them, that's all good. It's a pretty neat cut there, and uh, we just plant it. Do we have enough of that at the back, right? Like even more, we have that, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I will fill it up nicely. <clears throat> so this, if you can make a bunch, then I will put it. So I will try to make its height so that it doesn't pretty much come outside the water. And let me plant it now like this. I want to be really careful with these branches so I don't knock anything off. So you can see how I'm planting again on an angle. So it will be, uh, the tip of the plant will be coming uh, towards you. And that will look really nice when they, you know, when they change color or they, or they grow and uh, even when we trim it. So yeah, I'm gonna try to fill it really dense at the back and that way, you know, the tank will be stable. We will be adding a lot of fertilizer, Jag Aquatic fertilizers in it from day one. It will be all on the auto dozer. See already it's bulking up at the back. So even on the right side, next to that filter that you can see, I will be putting same plant. It really grows good in height. Um, color is really nice and it takes the trim really well. Thank you. So again, making sure I'm planting it at an angle. And also because the water flow is there, so flow of the water gonna make them fall towards the front. Okay, thank you. So whenever, whenever we are bunching the plants, um, so Georgia, that's for you also. See like how this one is long. So we make sure that the height is same. 
especially when we are planting, and then it will look nice straight away. Otherwise, we have to trim it later on, which we will do. We'll trim certain plants, but make sure the height is good. So that's the best way to plant. Thank you. Hello, hi. hi. What I will do while you we are doing that, I can quickly do this. So again, we are using um, Japanese hair grass mini. Uh, really nice and healthy stock here. Uh, I will get rid of the rock wool and then divide it into small bunch and then we'll plant it. So the best way to plant the Japanese hair grass is in between the rocks everywhere. That's how naturally every grass grows. Uh, so to give it, give that natural look, I will plant it more heavy here. And as you go back, it will be a bit thinner in plantation uh, just to create that sense of depth. That's, uh, that's with every natural scene. So divide it into small, uh, small bunches and just push that in. Again, tweezers are really helpful. And we have a lot of, uh, you know, Japanese hair grass here. So I will plant it nice and thick. Yeah, that's that's okay. Uh, get take, take all of it. So I will quickly plant that. And then we will add the stems again at the back later on. So I'm doing a heavy planting because we will be fertilizing straight away and it's really good to heavily plant a new tank. Uh, there is a bit of ammonia and fertilizers leaching out of the tank. So if you have a good bunch of um, stem plants the tank will be stable and also your foreground plants will not burn but because of high ammonia sometimes they can like hc or grosso uh, or monte carlo All right. thank you So Japanese hair grass can grow in low light conditions also. So that's why a little bit of a shady area that is under this driftwood, it will still grow nice. And because it's in between rocks, so its runners will not, you know, jump rocks easily. So that's why best place to plant them. You can give me do the next one. Yeah, a little bit rock wool, no problem. All right, Jyoti, you don't have to be super. I know you like to be perfect, but you don't have to be. <laughs> so I will try to put it here also if we have subsidy at perfect. So plants will get mixed up, but when we are doing maintenance, uh, we will we will do certain uh, you know trimming of certain plants. Uh, it doesn't matter in a natural scape, plants will overgrow. They will cross each other. As long as we keep our maintenance, uh, there should not be any issues. And by maintenance, I mean you are changing weekly 
around 30% to 40% water. You are making sure that uh, plants are trimmed. They are not totally overgrown. And uh, you're dosing your fertilizer regularly. So even if you underdose or overdose, what happens is if you're overdosing, you, you can reset your tank. But suppose you, you forgot to dose uh, your fertilizer uh, one or two days, it doesn't matter. Uh, but mostly, as long as you're consistent with, uh, with your fertilizing, uh, plants will adapt nicely. And also make sure when you are, if you are dosing uh, something, a particular brand, or if you are dosing, for example, estimative index or some other fertilizer, and you want to switch to Jag Aquatics, do it progressively. Uh, don't just shock your plants. Uh, make sure that your changes, changes are subtle and slowly. Those plants adapt. Um, they adapt to... Uh, limiting nitrate or they adapt to, uh, you know, something like estimative index where you're overdosing and you're doing a big research. So make sure that you slowly change the environments of plants. All right, uh, first question is, how do you guys keep the tank so clean? We have snails and everything, and our tank is full of algae. So how do you keep the tank clean and yeah. free from algae? Yeah, okay. Um, the question is how we keep our tanks clean and free from algae. First, the main thing, uh, which everyone um, thinks is not a big deal, is to maintain every week you need to maintain uh, yes you can miss one or twice or if you're on holidays but if you do a 30 to 40 percent water change uh, plants all these plants come from river streams right so you have to make sure that you put a new water it really helps um, and also what it helps to do is if you have a lot of fertilizers or if you have a lot of uh, um, you know food in the tank uh, that will reset it all and and then it will be perfect then and the other thing that um, that we do, uh, I will ask Steve to recommend certain products there for uh, for killing algae sites. Uh, you know, for the algae sites that we have, which kill the algae. Uh, but the biggest thing is uh, using the correct fertilizers, doing your regular maintenance. You can add some fish like auto sinkless that are pretty good with, uh, which is best cleaning crew. Um, you can add some algae eating shrimps. Uh, so if you if you have all that stuff happening, your tanks will be always super clean. Uh, because fish is doing its job, uh, fertilizer are growing the plants. So if a plant are if a plant is growing good, they will outcompete the algae. Algae is algae also uses light and fertilizer. So if plant can outcompete them, algae will be pretty less. There are some algae that will come. It's it's a natural system. So algae will be there, but as long as they are very limited, maybe you know five to ten percent in a tank, uh, it means your tank is uh, stable and it will be very clean. So Steve, what is the, um, to prevent, uh, you know, with, in, in terms of snails, uh, if you want to get rid of snails, I know you can use a fish, um, you know, you can use Pakistani loach or fishes uh, that can eat these snails, but is there any product that you use and recommend uh, for the clients that, uh, that help them? So I mean, we try to use less chemicals, but yeah. if, if there is, uh, and you really want to have a quick, uh, quick effect and get rid of them. What so what you mean? First thing I said about snails is they're not, not bad. bad. Exactly. I, I love okay. them sometimes. Um, <laughs> they're, they're a natural part of the ecosystem. And if you've got a lot of snails, well, they're probably eating a lot of algae. Right? So you take the snails away, you end up with algae. So yeah. bear that in mind. Uh, but if you really, uh, if you've got too many and you feel that um, you do need to remove them, there's um, one simple, really simple trick um, that you can remove quite a lot of them. Um, for example, you get a piece of really high quality food, like a um, like an aquaforest soft food or, or something, and put it just, for example, at the front of the tank, like a point here, turn your lights off, yeah. and uh, come back in two hours, and every, <laughs> every snail in the tank will be around that piece of food, and siphon them out, done. Um, you can squish them, turn them into fish food, fish love them, yeah. they're really tasty, apparently. Um, but that, that simple treat uh, will remove, can remove like, at least maybe say half the snails in your tank. 
overnight yep. or in, in, in an hour or two. So that's a method. And um, uh, what you can kind use of free things shame? like copper treatment and so on, yep. but um, the copper treatment will kill all the invertebrates. Yes. That that's lots of dead snails and yep. dead shells and so on. Uh, but but I'll just go back to the first thing I said was why are they so bad? Yeah, they, they're, they're algae. Yes. Um, there's plenty of snails that people add to their tank to look yes, to exactly, eat, to yeah. eat algae. Yeah. Um, and um, that, that's a great thing. So, um, yeah, I, but yeah, what kind of fish? Yeah. Removing them um, is quite easy. Yeah. Way. So, most loaches um, love snails. Yeah, love snails. And, yeah. and they, um, they'll literally you know, dig them out and upturn them and, 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 and gobble them up. Uh, clown loaches are great, but they grow quite big. Um, Pakistani loaches are a nice smaller fish. They're a good yeah. one as well. Yes. Um, and sedimentary and so on. So um, there's there's a few fish options as well, and those fish will um, will, will take care of them. But be careful in a planter tank with some loaches because they you know they'll, they'll dig in to get yeah. the, get the snails. And if you've got some delicate carpet or something, then that might not be what you want because they might dig dig your carpet up and that sort of thing. So. Um, um, yeah, and, I and guess there's, there's yeah. that factor as well that you've got to be careful with. If you have to use a treatment, then a copper-based treatment will work, uh, but it'll also kill but all, not all in invertebrates. Your shrimp tank, definitely, you yeah. don't want to yeah. put any invertebrates yes. up to the shrimp. Yeah. Um, and uh, the fish uh, certainly don't enjoy it, but it kills parasites as well. Yeah. Um, and, but you've got to be particularly careful about using it, um, make sure you're using a test kit to measure the exact dose, and also... Uh, make sure you're removing it afterwards with water changes and products like uh, Cooper, uh, Cooper, which absorbs it. Uh, Cooper absorbs, sorry, Cooper mines the copper. Cooper, Cooper absorb, which absorbs it, and, and a really, really good quality carbon as well to remove um, uh, the copper out of the system. Yeah. No, I think that's, that's, that's a, that's a pretty good. Copper's not good for anything in the tank. Yeah, really, yeah, for sure. You want it out afterwards. Yeah. So if you have to, you can use that. Yeah. Copper based treatment. How's the planting? Another one. Yes. Another question. Yeah. yeah. Why are you planting with the tank filled with water? Why are we planting with the tank filled with yes. water? Is the question. So, yeah. So if you if you seen our yesterday stream, uh, I I planted or I attached moss when um, there was no water. I mean, obviously it's pretty hard to uh, you know attach a moss with the water. But why I fill and then add stem plants is because stems will be straight away standing, especially if it's a long stem or a tall stem, like at the back, we planted uh, Bacopa. So what will happen is I do want to see when stems, when all these stems are standing, how they look, where they are planted, um, how they look from the front. If you remember, if you remember uh, what I showed there with Bacopa, Bacopa is that the crown of the plant is really beautiful. So I want to see it. So what I do is I put it at an inclined angle. So that helps if, if the water is there. Um, and also mainly it's the placement, how the plant's gonna flow. We have a filters there. I also want to see when a, when a water flow is there, whether they are uh, coming forward or to the left. So all those factors can only be uh, planned or seen if the, if the water is there. I hope that answers the question. And what we've done, you might notice, is to make it a little bit easier. Yeah. It's left a bit of a gap at the top, so when your hands going in and out, yes. in and out, yeah, it's not, not sloshing water on the yeah. floor and so yeah. on. We'll fill the tank up to about a centimeter from the top um, once we're done, but um, we've left a bit of space there so that we're not uh, making a mess on the floor. Although I think that would be good. That's okay. Mess is part of the. Uh, need some more questions. questions? Please send through some more questions. Yeah, that's a beautiful green gecko here. That's a lovely plant in yes. a shaded spot. Yes. It's a really good clever placement. That'll really um, thrive yeah. there. And because it's got just that sort of dappled and sort of half light, um, it, uh, it, won't get, it won't get algae on it because of the slow growing leaves. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. So you can see I'm planting all the hair grass bellum here um, and put on an elevated, um, you know, space here. And uh, it will again it will spread all the way down here. And if it's too much, we'll, we'll trim it, we'll, we'll pick it up. I will try to plant hair uh, next to the path. I know some some of the hair grass will come here. We'll we'll plant here also. Hair grass can grow really easy on the 
on the sand, but below the sand, we have a lot of soil. So it's just a decorative sand and we will plant it all the way here, heavy planting here. And as we go back to create that sense of depth, we will plant less at the back. Anything, all the runners, they're gonna come here in our regular maintenance, we can, we can keep trimming them up. Uh, like with any garden at your home also, you, you have to trim and you have to keep plants in control, otherwise it will overgrow. And that's also one of the reasons algae start coming in. If a plant is all plants are all overgrown, your filters will not be effective, and the flow will be stopped, and eventually you will start getting algae. So make sure you do that regular maintenance every couple of weeks. The trimming and maintenance is um, it's a good example. It's like your like your garden at home. Um, yeah, I mean it's a little bit of maintenance, maintenance, a little bit of trimming, and it's good relaxation and fun. Yes, um, definitely. So lots of green, lots of hair grass and s -ripens. What else is going along the front there? Yeah, so we will be adding uh, Monte Carlo. Uh, oh, so after good. this, we will add Monte Carlo all the way in the front. Yeah. Uh, Monte Carlo hair grass is easy to trim also. Even they get, they're going to get mixed up, but we can so we nice just do it. Look. Yes, nice natural. The, the stone should break up a lot of that. Yes, exactly. And yeah, at the back, I'm planning to put a um, Rotala blood red all the way here, and we'll have some green plants at the back, a bit of Rotala red here also, and we'll have some Rotala red at the back. Uh, but we will do we'll do some changes as we, you know, as the plants grow and we see that, okay, where we can replace or change. Um, thank you. The Rotala blood red is stunning. Yes. And with those through. lights yeah. and, um, and those the lights, gonna make it, yes, we're going to yes, definitely. Um, that'll be great. So, Georgia, after that, if we can get, um, I think you already separated Rotala. You did that Rotala pull, yeah. Just, just give me that. Yeah, give, give, yeah. Give me that. yeah that's okay. Uh, Rotala pearl. Yeah. So I'm going to add Rotala pearl to, to give a bit of a natural that's look. A tall one. Uh, there's a couple of different sorts of Rotala pearl. That's the taller version. Got there. Oh, there are different voids. Yeah, there's right? some tiny ones that only grow about yay big and the tiny, tiny little leaves. Okay. That's the slightly bigger one. Okay. It was in this tank. Yep. Um, uh, about from Wednesday, Thursday, <laughs> until we cleaned it out. So it's um it's done well. So again, it's a it's it's a beautiful plant. looking plant. It's it's even good for your nanoscapes. Uh, you know, I really if you can trim it, uh, size is really good. And what I'm gonna do is I will plant it, uh, you know, in the areas just behind the styrofoam. Uh, I know it can grow quite tall, but we will keep it trimmed. You can trim and, it you know, yeah. down like this, and then all the new growth will start growing yes, together. Yes, it's a, it's a stem plant, so it'll come back yeah. very easily from a trim. And it has a it has a I think pinkish underneath yeah, uh, underneath coloration, really and and it shows up really nice. So again, really easy to plant, uh, you know, with every plant, make sure the height of the stem plants are, are similar. Uh, you can cut the bottom bit and then easily plant. Use tweezers always. I know. So why do you make sure that all the uh, stem plants are the same? Length? So, I mean, if you, if you, if you look the, uh, I mean, basically it's just more presentable. Um, and also the way I want to build up the height as we gradually build the height up. So that's why I'm cutting at a at certain height. And if, if we are not doing that, then we have to trim them. You know, after planting, we will trim a bit, but then uh, you know I am not, um, I'm avoiding that trim, and also the tank will look uh, presentable from day one, especially in the shops. Beautiful yes. effect of the plants, exactly. All yeah, all all having a nice kind of exactly. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Stragglers, yeah. No tall puppies, sorry. Sorry. No tall puppies. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. 
So this whole area here, the yeah, I will plant uh, Japanese hair grass. It will look really nice uh, when the big areas are covered with Japanese hair grass. So. Your mic is okay, right? Yeah, that's good. all right what we will do is we need um, uh, aromatica we have quite a lot right uh, not this one no sorry this one is limnophilia okay so I will be adding some limnophilia here on this side because it has, again, it has, it, it does grow a little bit yellowish green on the top, very nice underneath pink. I will plant that in that, in that section at the back and, um, you know, really heavily plant with Rotala red there after that. Um, and, but the background will be all this plant and same here. We'll, we'll put that same plant there. Can I, yeah, after this, can I get that Rotala blood red? Where, where is that? I mean, or if we can get it. Actually, what I'm thinking is I'm going to get, I, I will plant this on the right side because I've planted Rotala red here. It will be a bit of work, but I really want to change this position. So guys, remember the promotion is uh, still on on the Natural Aquarians website. So do go there and utilize that. Um, it's twenty five percent off uh, on hardscape plant fertilizers. So really go for. All right. Uh, that's not blood red. It is red, but it's not blood red. Uh, uh, I will add that. Yeah, if I mean blood red, so if we can get that. I'm here, yeah. 
Yep, yep. So I will plant more red plants next to that crib because uh, this crib gecko will, I know it will grow a bit bushy and then we have some you know, nice red plants behind it. I will actually add more. <coughs> I will add more of the crypts there because these are these are a bit taller and uh, that will give it a, a bit more uh, bulk to the to the whole uh, crypt stems that we have or crypt plants that we have. I have, yep. Yes. Oh, the, you mean the driftwood? Yeah. Yeah. So the question is whether um, whether I scrub the wood before I use it in the in the escape. Um, no, I don't usually. Uh, but there are certain woods that needs to be uh, soaked. But what if if you buy it from a pet store, it's pretty safe to use straight away into the into your aquariums. So you don't need to. You don't need to uh, scrub it, uh, but why people soak it is to make it waterlogged. Uh, but because I I joined all these rocks and the wood using the super glue or the Aquatics Instant Glue, and what is happening is it's holding all the woods together, yeah. right? So it will not float. But some uh, some hobbies do soak it to make sure that it sinks, right? But the new method is um, that you can uh, you can glue it. Uh, really nicely and then it will hold it uh, but otherwise all these uh, drift foods that you buy from aquarium store they make sure that they are fish safe right? so you can use straight away you don't need any scrubbing on them so i have a really nice rotala uh, rondorfia which i'm going to use um, i will use a bit at different places uh, plants are more i want to use a lot of plants but uh, i know i will i will run out of space there are more plants here than the space that we have. And I don't want to over dominate a tank with red plants, but I really love this plant, so I do want to use it here and we will trim it to give it a, give it a nice uh, slope here. And this passage will just disappear underneath that, underneath that plant. Oh, yeah, that's nice. Okay. Yeah, give me as much as you have. So your buddy and when we're doing the um, when we're doing the uh, fresh water at your home. Yeah, we uh, we planned already. Okay, I will convince you guys then. Yeah. See you. Have a nice day. Okay, there goes the Rotala blood red and Rotala Rondolfia. That will be a bit more orange. It can turn really red if we are limiting the nitrate, but I will keep the nitrate levels around 10 ppm. Um, and I will add more there and at the back, at the back 
I'm, I'm actually thinking to add this lemnophilia at the back of, of this side because it's more on the yellowish side. So we'll do that there. Yeah, I will just plan that then go for blood red. We have any more? Ophelia? No. Can give me rotala right? yeah, Thank you. Just give me all. So I'm planting all the rotala blood right on this side. So this will become more of a um, you know red plant focused area. And once they grow a little bit taller, you know, plants are standing and they open up. Uh, under under these blaze lights, they they're gonna really pop up in their colors. And with the right uh, fertilizers, they will grow healthy and bigger. So nitrogen limiting is good, but what nitrogen also does is, um, if you limit it too much, then the plant leaf size will be smaller. You can compensate that by using some root tablets if you want to, uh, but fertilizer overall is necessary for every planted angoon for a mosaic or a bucket fandria, anubis, all those kind of plants. Every plant needs fertilizers and right fertilizers for them. So I'm again doing every area of the tank. I'm doing heavy planting. Thank you. All right, what green plants we got? Uh, red, red. Uh, we have more Japanese here, us. Okay. We don't have any more back, right? Yeah. Can we get more, like get a few parts of that? So I'm also gonna put Japanese here, us. Uh, if you if you look, if you look at all this area, I want to put some more Japanese red grass and once it's all grown nice and nice and thick. Yes, sir. 
what i will do we're going to put japanese hair brush here but the back the back end yeah i will have some green plants i'm thinking which one i'll just go in the back and pick up some more nice plants So tank will get a little bit, um, you know, a little bit milky or, you know, uh, not super clear because obviously we are, uh, we are digging the soil, but after some time it will be, it will be fine. So a little bit here, I will use hair grass. just a few different places to give it a natural feel. Yeah, you can give me all. Yeah, yeah that's okay. Um, So really nice, beautiful, healthy Monte Carlo available here. And again, I will divide into bunches, get rid of the you know, bottom soil or rock pool part. And we will plant it. I like to make, you know, a little bit more smaller uh, bunch here and just using your tweezer, plant it. Makes your life easy if you're using tweezers. And what I will do, I will trim it a bit uh, after planting. So when we do our maintenance next time, we will add a little bit substrate more in the front. Um, I would say the substrate should be around five to six millimeter. Uh, we will siphon a bit of from a bit of from this side uh, to add white sand. Uh, but you should need you will need a little bit extra substrate here so that plants can you know when you're planting it's more easier. Even though you know Gloucester still have a pretty good root system. Thank you. I think at the back there is a uh, Georgia hydro portal. You know the plant. I will. I will love to show you. Yes, hydro portal. If you can bring that, we'll add that at the back. And In the Monte Carlo, what I always do because this is all overgrown that comes from these suppliers, so I will trim them, uh, and they will they will then you know uh, throw the side runners pretty quick. This is this we call that's good we got something. Oh sorry.
This is a mini type, I think. Right? Yeah. Oh, no, no, the, um, the hydro cartel. Let's see. Hydro cartel oh, mini or Japan, I think. That's from right. So we will use this hydro cartel plant at the, at the back behind that, uh, behind the Japanese air cross. And also a little bit in the shady part. I know it can grow uh, nice in the shady part too. So we will put it there. Now why it will have a very beautiful light green color, uh, totally different contrasting leaves. It will look, look really beautiful. You know, it's hang, I mean, throwing runners over the rocks. Uh, but again, we have to keep it in check. It can be quite invasive and grows really fast. So you can see at the back, uh, you know, we will not let it grow too high, keep it trimmed so your, your path and next to the path, uh, that whole area is uh, really nicely controlled in terms of growth. And I really would like to put some here. I know that's a quite a low lit area and I'm pretty sure we'll get some light and you know it's still, still dark area and let's see how it does there um and if it doesn't do well i might i might put actually some uh boost there so all these areas where we can't put any any plant because there's a wood underneath that we will put some bucket flandry or anubis I think we have uh, have some nice you know, base white or bucket flannery. We can we can use that. Um, let me think. If I... Georgia, can I get a Caesar from like a uh, just a covered Caesar? Yeah, give me the plants. I will take care of them. I have a bit more Japanese here grass, and I you know we haven't uh, planted it next to the pot, so I want to put some here again to give that you know nice natural look.
So yeah, this kind of sports is really good. Uh, we're in between the rocks, and they will not, uh, you know, easily throw runners around or whatever they will throw. They will jump off the rocks, and you can easily cut them. And that way, it's perfect. You know, it's a perfect way to control the growth of uh, hair grass. Okay, let me think. Where else we need to? Okay, give me that uh, hydrocotyl. Yeah. Thank you. So I will plant one hair just at the back. Yeah, uh, but this one will need a heavy trimming all the time, just to give it a contrast next to the background and the and the nice orangish red uh, rutala that we have there. And uh, behind it, I'm balsamia plant, green, nice bright green, and uh, rutala will contrast very nicely. Which is this one? Um, I'm not sure if you want to wrap up with the... Okay. All right, will you, if we, we have more of this also, right? Uh, yeah. Same okay. here, right? Yeah. Any big one yet? Yes, yes, if you can. Yeah, this is a beautiful semi plant, you know, very nice texture to the leaves, a beautiful shape. This does grow quite big, so I'm thinking to put it at the back. And again, if we can keep it nicely trimmed, the new growth and uh, growth will look really nice. And, and you can trim it. I haven't seen this plant a lot of people use, but I think it's a, it's a pretty good addition where you want some green plants. Uh, I might have used Rotala Green there, but uh, but it's not uh, available. And also, I want to use some different plant in this thing. Um, I think this is a striking green color. Will look really beautiful. If you have any suggestions, you know, like uh, if you think differently that what other plants can be utilized at different positions, do share in the comments. Um, I would really like to know. And I think this will also look really nice, especially these small plants that I have behind the behind this driftwood. We'll have some area where we can have some nice bright green plants, and that will that will even shine through more in our driftwood. Yeah, any, any tall ones? Better? Yeah, but I think they all decide. They'll, they'll grow pretty fast. Yeah, that's okay. Mine. Thank you. Sorry.
Yeah, all good. We need more of this. So I'm planting it here, here um, on this, uh, you know, just before this rock, so it will, it will look really nice at the back in the background of this driftwood. Driftwood will contrast beautifully with the foliage of this plant. And once this plant grows, uh, you know, it will be here and we'll trim it neatly all the way, create a nice slope there. I just have a little bit of plants that are floating. They came off, put them back. You have some nice grassy list there, right? If you can give me that. That grassy yeah, grass list. So I will also add a bit of grassy list on the left side. And it does remain the orange side so it's a it will not be striking red color on the on the extreme left so i want to keep the balance of the tank uh, so that reds are more at the two-third or the focal point of the tank or more on the sides of the pot but we are still not on exactly on two-third where the red part is Okay, can get that. Yeah, yeah, no, that's fine. I will have to trim it. So yeah, on the left side we'll have a. So this is a big leaf plant, and you know, it will try to it will create a sense of depth because we will use it. Use it here. No, there's nothing good there. Which one? Oh, I must. No, I mean, I, I need a little bit of that. So this should be, should do the job. Let me think, because... Uh, I need to give a space for them to grow. Oh, okay. You need something for for this side. If you have orange, bring yeah, whatever you like. Put that in. Yeah, yeah. Uh, do we have any? A oh, Monte Carlo. I will need. I will need like three or four of them. Leave it there. I will. Out. We have any? You want to add any pocket friendly or boost? And whatever you like. I mean, we will, yes. I mean, Anubis or Boost, we can. Yeah. I mean, especially the sports that are a bit dark, you know, like here. It will, it will look nice. Can we fill the you want to fill the water? I'm pretty much done. Sorry? You want to fill up the water? Okay. 
a little bit uh, level up and we can then net all the cuttings. Um, so if you look here, yes, we will. Yeah. yeah. So if you, if you if you come on the ladder, you will see the from the top. We'll have a short guys from the top and uh, you know see how things are looking. So this will once it's grown more till here, we will trim it. Yeah, the stomach is yeah. very physically yes, large. Yes, it's a large plant, plant right? So plant. yes, so it will be nice, but we'll keep it checked. Uh, this hole will go a little bit bronze in color, you know, with the lighting that we have. We'll have a bit of orange plants that um, uh, that we're gonna get now. Blood red will go really super yeah, red. Just Again, orange, keep it trimmed. We need to check that that plant at the back, Hydro Cartel. Yes, okay. so we, we just keep it trimmed, keep it trimmed. Uh, but we need some fast growing plants too to, to balance yeah. the tank. And what I'm going to do is I will be trimming the Monte Carlo. So it's, uh, we'll keep it down. And, and that's the best way, you know, even when you're planting it. So after you've done the, oh, sorry, after you've done the planting, uh, because the Monte Carlo that you get from shops is obviously overgrown, which is a good thing. And you just trim it a little bit, you know, like this to just shape it straight away. When you plant yeah, it. It's good, to, it's good to trim it straight away so you get yes. to grow it sideways. As yes, well, yes. So it will grow sideways. You like some wave scissors? Yeah, we, I, can, I can use that. Okay. So there are different types of scissors that's available here. So the wave scissors. Yeah, I think uh, this is. Job, uh, yeah. I'm making sure it's a bit easier there. Yeah, you need a, a different one. It's, uh, oh, that it's just a bit better. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ended up putting it through on it. Yeah. And, um, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, you can, I mean, even this one is a curved scissor, so it's really good for the, the foreground down, plants right. and trimming them as close to substrate as possible. Because if you use just conventional yes. scissors with a straight, yes. you just can't get to it. So yeah, I mean, these are again, you know, really available at a good price at Nature's. So, uh, you know, jump on their website, you can have any style or any type that you prefer. I think there are you know, spring seasons too, you know. They, yeah, you little, can spring, spring, yeah. little spring care ones. Yeah, spring ones are really good for nano tanks, like if there's two foot tank, uh, where, where your hands, you know, like this is pretty big. If you want to put in a 30 centimeter tank, you're not going to work. You're going to get it. Put your shoulder yeah. in to get it. <laughs> get it. Um, you get a small a spring scissors and you can cut all the plant seeds with that. So you will see, uh, I mean, most probably by the evening, we will have some more shots. Water will be even more clear. Uh, obviously we uploaded, you know, we dig through the soil. So it, it is, it will yeah, a little bit cloudy from the planting, but uh, and because of the planting, but it will, it will come back uh, pretty quick. And you will see, you know, this moss gonna grow. I intentionally want to keep this part empty for now. I will see how this moss grows, and if we if we need to, we will bring it over. But too much moss, and we'll lose the shape. Um, it depends which, which style we want. In natural aquariums, sometimes people cover everything with moss. Uh, we can do that, but for this style of setup, we prefer not to. And we want to showcase the beautiful texture of the wood. <laughs> Oh, that's that's pretty good. So we have a try of moss. Oh my goodness! For all you. the Look at that. yeah, for all yeah, the moss lovers, there's thousand dollars. <laughs> so for all the moss lovers, these are beautiful plants. Uh, you know, very rare shops in Australia have this kind of collection. And so, uh, so you know, make sure you yeah. use that one. Yeah, that one's beautiful. Yeah. So I'm gonna I'm gonna ask uh, Steve to put moss in because okay. uh, because he can, uh, you can. You have to take care of this plant, really. They are precious plants. Uh, they are slow growers, but we will try to put them in more of a shady areas or where we have a wood underneath. So there are certain places where we only have wood. Uh, so, so Steve, have to be a bit careful. Uh, so so we, yeah. uh, we, well, what's, I mean, what's I mean, like, like here, uh, so what I'm thinking. Uh, even though this is high lit part, but you can you can go yeah, around yeah, the around there around yeah, yeah. you know, the shade, so you can put that there. So you can use this uh, letter. Just from you guys. Oh, yeah. The time, we use the camera there, so try okay. So planting a little bit of boost. Okay. That's nice, nice man. man. People will love that, uh, you know, imperfections. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. nice. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Yeah, I was on that. Yeah, give me that. Uh, actually, like, you know, the green plant that you, I think it's Anubis. Um, 
So one thing about planting the boost is you don't plant the rhizome, that's the horizontal piece. You only have the little roots yes. in the soil. And I can, you don't even need that. The roots will um, climb onto a rock or a piece of wood on their own. So, so guys, this is, um, I think it's a little bit not up at Oh, that's really nice. Yes. Right? And it's a beautiful, bunch. beautiful clump. I am really uh, you know, thinking to put it on the right side, you know, where we have this, um, you can see we have the shady area under the board. This will look really nice. Yeah, if you guys can see it. Uh, yeah, we can we add it there. But yeah, you add that and after that. I will put some in this. I will boost off the area. Um, these and and so I mean, you know what will happen? A lot of otherwise, a lot of uh, variety. And we want them to punch up, so we'll use a little bit less. Again, just less making sure we keep it the soil. Yeah. Market. Yes, yes, good. Thank you. Do you want more of the Okay, if you got get get that because that will be really nice. So, uh, boost we're not gonna go over the board, we will we can use now. That one, that one, leave it. We'll use Nana Pretty to move. And this one is the boost just going a little crack there, so it doesn't need to be in the soil, just a little shady spot in the crack. Nice natural look. Trying to find some more shady spots. Don't want much, just some accent. You can you can go behind yeah. everything behind yeah. there, yeah. If if there I mean just behind with the um, behind the hair grass if there is space there. You can just gently wedge it in between the crack and the rock, and it'll stay there. And the roots yeah. will take hold. This one has nice purple round leaves. This one we'll put it's in that little gap there. So we'll put a nice little trail upwards of the boost and just gently put it in there and it'll just sit there and the roots will take off. Nice shady spot. It's Nana Petite. We will add Nana Petite on the right side. So we can break this up in the rhizome. See the rhizomes here? Yeah. So you can break those up like that. And again, you want to make sure that only the roots go in the substrate and they don't even have to do that. But you never want to plant this piece under the um, substrate or it'll die off. Where would you like the nano okay. Um I think it will look really nice on the right side. You know, we have on this, um, so right side we have these branches going backward below that it's a nice shady area we can put it there maybe from this side it's um i think the camera oh man that's nice so you can look guys the quality of the plants is beautiful um rotala blood red yeah i am definitely you know gonna go over the board and plant it all there it will look, look nice from straight away and uh, we might plant a bit under that, um, under the under the arch at the back, a like little bit there, just to keep that red striking red balance on both sides. And yeah, that's a, that's a really good technique. What Steve is doing. See if you can come this side. I think it will be more. See how he we planted it in between that um, you know edges in between two rocks. Uh, and obviously can grow really nice um, without any substrate. Yeah, so you can you can do that with this kind of plant and also try to try to bunch it together because once it's have a clump it will look, look really nice I think I think on the right side we will add some anubis. Anubis nice. so, so for the right as well. Yeah. Okay. I mean, so I mean anubis will be good on the right side. 
Yeah, yeah like these ones. So this is a new screen too. Like this. Um, yeah. yeah. See, so guys, you can see it's a beautiful paint to it. I know in the under the highlights, it's gonna really turn more white yeah. and some, uh, some great compact and white. Yeah, some so that will have like, like, a, like a variegated, like yes, yeah, it's very really good effect. Um, yeah. And I think we have some um, that's the pinter Nubius white as well. Um, yeah, so you can just can see leaves. quite quite nice whites coming out. And yeah, um, yeah we'll we'll. Pintos, not white. Uh, yeah, we'll just have an obvious end. You have Nana Petit, right? Yes, you should have that. Yeah. No, I think, yeah, you can get rid of Bruce. So, Steve, let's have some behind this rock. And, you know, in that area, we can, we, I mean, we can even put these clumps straight away there. It will, it will look really nice. Or I will, I will have some of these clumps straight away. Okay, let me. <laughs> So because this uh, this plant is already tied to the rock, uh, really easy. I will just go in and add it to the add it here. I can add both the both the bunches here. So you can see in between the rocks, it's already looking nice. It will turn a little bit uh, more white, so that's why I want it here. And behind it, I can have a normal Anubis Nana Petit. You can see that bunch. It's bunched up. Looks straight away nice. And here we have we have a bit of shade here, a bit of a shady part here that I will plant again. With it's a bit more light area. I want to have a little bit pinto there. Oh, it's a bit hidden. And again, this is on the rock. Easily, you can put it. And you can plant Anubis, but don't plant the right zone, uh, like Steve also mentioned before. Okay. Yeah, just keep pressing it for the lights will go off. There are. Okay. Yeah, if you can unmute me. Yeah. All right, guys. We gonna we will be planting, adding a bit more rotala blood red. I gonna plant some there and also a little bit at the back between those uh, between the hydrocotyl and calcemia, just to give a bit of a red on the on the left side and balance both the sides. Um, uh, we will use floating plants with this setup. Sorry? Floating plants? Okay, floating floating plants. Plants. Will, will we use floating plants in this um, setup? And if so, um, which ones? And what's your favorite? I actually rarely use floating plants in my escapes, uh, but I know they do look uh, nice. I mean, the, why I don't use it? Because I know they're going to shade certain areas of the, of the stem plants. Uh, floating plants are quite uh, more more popular in ponds, uh, you know, and, uh, but I will let Steve, uh, I mean, I don't have pretty much any favorite floating plant, but let's see once other question what he likes, because uh, they sure. also do a lot of ponds and uh, what he likes to use. Um, 
a lot of the floating plants that are used in aquariums, uh, red root floaters, for example, yeah. very popular, uh, frogbit. Um, but so frogwood is, I think, uh, in certain states is not allowed. Um, oh, okay. yeah, it's allowed. So, so, so yeah. red, yeah, red, oh, red is is for one, yeah. Um, so it's about as big as your thumbnail yeah. and blood red, um, particularly when it's got some access to some great lighting. But yeah. in, in a display like this, um, it's, it's certainly going to shade quite a lot. Yeah. Um, and I mean, it, oh, I don't think it probably goes with the theme. Yes, yeah, so it doesn't go with the theme, yeah. um, but um. You can use them um, in some lovely little displays. We have them in little paludariums and, and, and other displays where we just have, you know, four or five, maybe covers five, ten percent of the surface yeah. in displays where we've got some ferns or, or something similar, and it, it, it groups in a corner, shade to those ferns, and then we might have some other highlight requirement plants around the rest. So that's where I tend to use them. Yeah. I like the red roof floaters. Yes. No, red roof floaters are nice, sir. And especially in nano tanks, shrimp tanks, you can have them on. Uh, yeah, I mean, if your setup is this, uh, is a moss setup, um, then no problem. Even you have a little bit of shading. Actually, moss will love that, and uh, shrimps will like it. Also, it's more uh, more shade there than with those red floaters. If you can use that, you've got a filter in there with some flow, and it's yes, yes. So it tends to then therefore make sure that the red root floaters or other floating plants are in, in one section. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then that if you do it right, that can I mean you can put some uh, shade tolerant plants in that area. A bit fond of that, uh, that uh, macaranda there, Jack. Can't you? Oh, and I'm loving it the way I think I finished it all. So, yeah, you oh, have, you have get more. <laughs> but this is the oh, yeah, you know, okay, we have more. Just keep that. Don't tell him. Yeah, <laughs> you're gonna tell me. Uh, next question, yeah, favorite or best red plant? Favorite red plant. You can, you can, you can know that, that from the way out. I'm going crazy using uh, Rotala blood red and why it's favorite because it actually doesn't need uh, low nitrates. Uh, you know, even with high nitrates, even at 20, 30 ppm, uh, it will still turn really nice red, true red plant. Um, but if you give them low nitrate up to 5 ppm, it will even go really bright blood red, pink, pinkish color, uh, which, which you can do that with high light CO2 and and low nitrates, it turns even, even, you know, fiery pink red, which is beautiful. Color. There's a little bit of variegation for this one, so it's extra nice. So and in that, you know, planting, so it'll, it'll create this lovely dome pump when we trim it right. It will really yes, be. yes. There you go, last so one. Yeah, thank you. This is a question for you. It's from someone in the briefing. Someone in the briefing. Yeah, okay, that's nice. Yeah. Sure, right. Just ask for a friend over here. Oh, exactly. How much would a brief version of this cost? Just ask for a friend. He's not interested. So, someone asked, how, how much would a three foot version of this cost? Oh, good, buddy. Good. Um, well, this has um, all the best gear on it. The Yellow Magic Light. Can I have a little bit of Monte Carlo? Um, no good. expense spared yeah, on the plants and so on, um, and a professional to build it. Um, if you're building it yourself, um, you might for a three foot version with the, the, the really good gear that you need to uh, bring the right outcome. If you're building it yourself, um, you might do it for a few thousand. Um, if you've got a uh, professional, um, you're going to achieve something well beyond that. Um, you could spend anywhere from three to eight, depending on what equipment you want to use, how much plant um, you want to use, the rarity of the plants. And we've used some plants in here that are hundred dollars a pop but you don't have to use those um you can use the yeah, monte color that you, you have any you, cover half you have any so, you, know, you, you, can, you can have like a look, we have um a with some inexpensive yeah, plants yeah, and you can yeah, use yeah. some of the rare stuff in there as well so it does vary but um uh, I'll put the three down. That's it. yeah you can take away with us yeah starting at three down. asking for a friend <laughs> So um, I'm gonna, I would say that Jag is available for um, this gate, so get in touch with the store. Um, he'll be we'll have him down to do work um, on a semi regular basis. So you know, if you want something like this built, you can get a built and you can come and do it in your Talk to the store, we can make that happen. I think 
So the, the reefer that asked that question, I mean, um, the, the art that's involved in a display like this, um, we don't see in the reefing tanks. Uh, we see amazing colours and diversity and bling, um, but the, the artistry that comes into a, a uh, aquatic planted tank is, is a level beyond. It was my first love. Yeah, that's when nature's natural aquarium. Oh, so nature yeah. Aquarium. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Jace just putting a little bit of Monte Carlo in there at the front. So, what, yeah, what we're going to do is we will top up a little bit extra soil when we maintain next time because I think the soil is a little thin in the front. Uh, I would say best is to use, uh, you know, up to six, six centimeter, five to six centimeter thickness. Yeah. Uh, that helps to plant easily. Um, I mean, the plants that we have here in Monte Carlo is, you know, like a stem plant right now because they are really lush green and very healthy, good, good size bunch. Uh, and to plant them, you definitely need a little bit thicker soil. It, it'll develop a carpet yes, right through this area yeah. here and we'll keep yeah. it trimmed to about yeah. a centimetre yes. high. So it's yeah. Um And there'll be a little bit of hair grass and Monte Carlo yeah. going through. We'll and we need to make sure that the... Transition yeah, exactly. We need to make sure that the uh, all the details rock work that we have it doesn't get covered. Yeah, uh, we don't want to cover little, up that beautiful yeah. vines and those Yeah, so a little bit it will uh, will get color, which uh, which will give it a natural look, uh, but still we need to trim it, keep it at that one centimeter, two centimeter height. While we're talking about nice. the rock and the vines, and it might be hard to pick up in the camera, but the vines are all traveling in this direction. Um, and when you see it in store, it, it really makes a difference and help, and helps your eye to take that uh, that flow through um, and gives it a tremendous scale and depth. That's one of the tricks. You get all the veins running in, in, in the same direction. It looks like a natural wear uh, from, from water flow um, or weather, weathering. Um, and, um, and so it also gives a beautiful depth. So on the right side, I'm adding, adding Rotala. Rotala Ronalfia, which is a similar same plant as here, but again, I'm trying to create some randomness, some big bunches. So uh, that's what you know. It's in nature. I uh, learn from nature how the plants are growing. They never have a really set pattern. A um, little bit randomness always make it natural looking. And once they all grow, we will trim them. We will have mounts of various plants, and then we can discuss more on the trimming techniques. Uh, when next time uh, it's a bit overgrown, we'll do a trimming session. And we'll do that live too. So this is really nice and healthy growing plant. I will struggle with my hand. So again, I'm planting at that inclined angle so that when plant grows, it it comes forward, and I can see all the you know crown or the tip of the plants which really look nice. And also open top tanks. Uh, I mean, that's my favorite. It's just my personal choice. I really don't like hoods here because you know, any kind of hood. Not uh, many can, hoods here. <laughs> uh, yeah. uh, I mean, you can have shades on the on, on the lights if uh, if you prefer that. Uh, I know Illumagic Mini or Illumagic comes with a mirror uh, shades, which we used on the on the Mini uh, last week when we did a setup at uh, Acoustic. Uh, they they reflect the they have a very very nice top reflection of all the plants looks really nice uh, we might add that to this tank uh, but the top view is a beautiful view to see uh, when the plants are growing lush and top green. view I think is the best view yes I mean, that's the highest view um, grow towards the light yeah. of towards their yeah. um, their god their energy and exactly. um, um, they they look tremendous and when you're looking down on the beautiful planet it looks amazing so, so I'm pretty good really, yeah. I'm nearly, just nearly there. Yeah, I'm just trimming a few plants and then we will net out all the all the cuttings. So even with your regular maintenance, this is the maintenance that you do. You go and trim all the plants, uh, you net out uh, all the plants after that and just change the water. And that's the if you can do that regular maintenance, you you will see that uh, you know your tank is always healthy. Change 30 to 40 percent water, and when you change the water. Just dose uh, double the fertilizer for that particular day uh, because you're reducing the uh, fertilizers in the tank. The last bunch, this is variegated macaranda. You can see the pattern on the leaf. Yeah. It's quite a hard one to come by. So yes. And, yeah. <clears throat> I have to say, uh, one of the biggest collections that 
you know, nature's aquarium have in terms of plant, and they are all nice and healthy, you know. So if you want to set up a tank quickly, come here, you know, and and also, you know, they are at best value. Right now, 25% off. Like nice, um, of they can't be bunches. Exactly. Six travel, $22, six bunches. Yeah. Or oh, six bunches for $20, so like, really good value. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. No, I'm uh, pretty much there. We're going to net it. We're going to have to And um, we need a couple we'll, of buckets of water. Yes. If we can fill it, fill it up. Yeah, and no, it bucket. will be. Yeah. Just, we're going to need about four buckets. That will be perfect. Too, then. Too much going and on. we'll just wait yeah. it to clear. And I can see. So I'll make sure that Steve posts some nice shots every week for us. We'll, um, we'll do, I think, a, a weekly update. And, yes. and then we can do some trimming videos uh, exactly. and techniques and things as well. So we can show people how we take it from the planting here. Yes. And I understand why planted yes. the way it is. And which things we trim severely, the, the hydrocodal, and which things we just we, yeah. we let go. And we will be adding some uh, really nice air plants. Um, and we'll see. I mean, I will let that. Uh, to Steve, uh, you have a pretty good eye, good eye to appreciate the art, and um, you know I, I want to see what kind of uh, air plants he will add there. Uh, you can add any, uh, but air plants do need to be soaked in water for three or four minutes. I think every three to four days, uh, or you know weekly also will do the job. There's a quite a good aeration here, so you know they need that. I mean that's why they're called air plants. They, yes, they don't like uh, they don't like to be uh, to be soaked in the water at all. So just a little bit deep. Put them back in. You can, and you can, and even you can do. Yes, you can do that too. Yes. Well, if they're attached, yeah, you can just splash them yes. quite a bit. You can heavily spray them. If you're doing that, um, it depends on depending on the, the amount of wind in the space. There's a yeah. fair bit of wind here because yes. there's there's air management signs. So we tend to do them daily on a tank like this. But you don't want to. They don't want to be wet all the time. They're air plants. They yes. have a dry out. Here. Exactly. So we've got a couple of buckets of water coming to. Finish it off. Yeah. I really don't like, uh, you know, don't mind doing maintenance. That's, uh, you know, that's more. Oh, good. We've got plenty of maintenance. Yeah, I don't. I mean, if, if your escape is like this, I don't mind it. <laughs> uh, and, uh, you know, over the weekend, if you just. Uh, while watching uh, what i normally do while watching my sports i can just you know change water uh, that's the best time or if you're with your family you still can do this job easily uh, but if your escape is you know if your maintenance becomes a chore um then it's a definitely be a problem but if you enjoy this escape while you appreciate the beauty of the skip you can do the maintenance all right we'll add some more water uh, fix the water level and then we'll wait for water to clear. So, what are we going to dose this with, uh, and regularly yes. to maintain the yeah. growth that we want? Jake? So, so we have a. Uh, so, what we're going to do in this tank? Jag Aquatics fertilizers are available at uh, at Nature's Aquarium uh, for today only twenty five percent off. Uh, part of doing this scaping, uh, we had a uh, you know good deal from Nature's. So what we're using here is we have complete range. So Jag Aquatics fertilizer. The way uh, the way we designed is uh, easy to use, and at the same time, you are not overloading your tank crazy with fertilizers. Uh, there are different ways. You know, estimated index. A lot of people try to use it, uh, and I, I I I use it. I like it. But the thing with uh, thing what what I try to do with these fertilizers is. First of all, easy to use, and you don't. It's not necessary to change water every week because most of the people are busy. Uh, I know the advanced hobbyists; they have time. They want to be uh, really precise with their tank, like myself. I have time to spend, or I like to spend that time with my aquariums. But if you're busy, uh, you pick up a strutter. It's a it's a really good value, eighteen dollar forty nine, five hundred ml bottle. Um, you need to add five ml uh, per hundred liter. And what this does is, is, is the way it is designed, nitrogen, potassium, phosphor is, is pretty good for 70 to 80% of your plants. Uh, and this is all in one. If you don't have a CO2 in your tank, you still can use it. If you have medium life, you still can use it. And even a pro setup like this can use this or our complete pro, but we will be using this. Uh, and in addition to that, if you want to tweak 
any of the elements. So this gives you pretty good recipe for 70%, yeah. 80% okay. plants. But after that, you say, you know what? I like to see more nitrogen because I have tonina in my tank or cyanomyanthus species, and they love extra nitrogen. Uh, you can go and add nitrogen. Uh, if you if you want to, uh, you know, give a little bit of extra iron. So there's an iron in here already, but what happens? Iron doesn't stay more than four hours in the tank. Uh, you can use uh, you can use the advanced range, which is just iron. So what we're going to do with yes. the iron is um, we'll dose it using the E. coli dose and we'll Perfect. dose it three or four times a day. Exactly. To, to, to like avoid it, yes. so there's that constant flow of yeah. iron. And the, the difference between yeah even a daily uh, dosing or a weekly or by you know, every couple of days dosing to dosing um, regularly to make sure there's a constant flow of in exactly. particular iron. Yeah. Yeah, take the, the, the results are stunning. Yeah, the definitely. I, I, I you, you, yeah. you can do a lovely tank with it, with it but uh, if you get a doser and you're yeah. dosing the advanced iron yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, every four hours, for yeah. example, so you take you, uh, whatever the dose is for the rate is for the day and just divide yeah. it into four hour lots and have the dose of dose every four hours. It makes yeah. a huge difference. Yes. And I really like this point uh, from uh, from Steve that, you know, he's putting in a doser there and it also two helps. Is yes. Two in this. Yeah. <laughs> or two in there. And uh, so what will happen is you don't need to worry. I mean, especially what happens with me on Fridays if you have a late dinners or, you know, you don't need to worry. Well, I have to go and fertilize my tank. And also what he's going to do is he will he will divide the dose into six times a week. Right? Like like we said, dose more regularly instead of dosing once or twice a week, especially with iron. If you're dosing a couple of times, but a little bit amount, it's perfect for the plants because after four hours it's gone. Uh, so uh, definitely do that if you really want a uh, best outcome from, for your tank. Uh, you can also potassium. Potassium is something that gets limited um, in your tank. Uh, potassium doesn't come from anything. Phosphorus does come from uh, fish food. Um, nitrogen or nitrates come from the fish waste. Uh, but potassium is something that doesn't come from anywhere. So potassium is something even that you'd add extra in the tank. Uh, it doesn't hurt anything, but it's really important for uh, nitrogen iron consumption. So uh, it's a it's something you should always have handy. And then again, our advanced cities have a separate potassium. Uh, in the same way, we have phosphorus. So uh, phosphorus comes from fish food. A lot of phosphorus comes from there. Uh, but if you think that you have a really less livestock, uh, then you do need to add uh, phosphorus. So again, starter have certain phosphorus, but we didn't overload that fertilizer with too much phosphorus because of the food that, that people add. It, it will also give you, uh, you know, algae, uh, quite an algae in the tank if you add too much phosphorus. Uh, but you can always treat this with our, with our Red One series. Uh, so, so we've yeah. got to take um, with, with this volume of plants, and then obviously they're starting to grow over time. You're getting more and more. Should you increase the dose as you go? To yes. For the extra plants in the yes, tank? exactly. So when we start. Uh, plants will take two or three days, uh, you know, to really start consuming a lot of fertilizers. And also the way the mass of plants will develop, what you will happen is uh, if, a, if, if a starter says that you need to put this three times a week, uh, you can always start with, if your plant mass is not like this, we, you know, we plant it really heavy, you can start with one or twice a week. And as the plants grow up, uh, you can you can increase it. Uh, what I normally do is, I know mostly people like to test their water, but it's really easy to know that plants are growing really nice or not. Like like balsamia there will be bright green. Uh, your rotala blood red will be really nice red. You know your fertilizing is uh, is correct. But if you if you really want to know, you can always have a nitro kit. You know, if you have a nitro kit, it's it's test all of us. Yeah. And, and iron, iron in particular, it's, yes. it's, it's tested at different times of the yes, day. Exactly. That fluctuation. Yeah. But if you are if you're dosing it multiple times iron, I would say you know, it will be pretty it's good levels. Constant. Yes, it would be constant. And what in, in our dosage or in our, you know, labels, what we have written is you just need to know, just need to know nitrates. If your nitrogen is uh, between five to 10, you like to run with nitrate limiting. Um, yeah. For your red plants, it's all good, but mostly people tend to between 10 to 20. Uh, that's where plants, every plant will grow nice and green, uh, but you will not be able to stress the plant to get that extra red out of it. I don't like to do it for long term. Uh, I mean, if you if you're entering your tank in a comb, but you want the best shot out of your tank, you can limit your nitrate for one or two weeks. Take a shot, you know, bring it back again, depending how you want to play it. And that's what the beauty of advanced and starter is. Right? You can use that. So, we'll, so we should increase the volume we're dosing over time. Exactly. More and more plants. Yes. Yes. Matter. Yes. yes. So as as plant grows. So eventually this tank will be full of plants at the back and will be hitting at the top. Uh, so, and when you trim it after that also, you make sure 
uh, you know, you have that because after trimming plants will not uh, grow for a few days. So you can bring the fertilizer a little bit down and then pump it back up. Uh, the other that we have, I will show the other range. So we have, uh, we have in our complete range, we have complete light. Now this is a really good product. Uh, I know a lot of people love to grow just boost only tank or Anubis, Anubis white. Uh, so this, this fertilizer have less of nitrates in it, uh, but the right amount of micros, potassium, iron. So this is one of the best fertilizer if you are only keeping rhizome type of plants, Anubis type of plants, and uh, you know, ferns are perfect for that. Uh, so really specially created for that. Uh, we have shrimp safe, uh, as the as it says, the shrimp safe. The copper content is really, really less. We all need copper, you know, so don't go that shrimps don't need copper. Every living organism needs copper, uh, but it's in very uh, less amount. So that's what we have in there. Uh, really safe if you are keeping a lot of high-end shrimps. If you're keeping cherry shrimps, I would say every fertilizer you can use, they're all safe, but high-end, you know, Pinto, uh, or, uh, or you know your CRS tank, CRS uh, shrimps. I would I would prefer this. And again, those according to the dosage, don't overdose it. Uh, your all shrimps will be healthy. Can I get the pro also, Steve? The I think oh. yeah, the complete pro. Yeah. So but yeah, um, you can compare um, CO two yes. on this tank, of course. Um, we have some a number of canister filters in in under here. From the last one, this one with an inline. Uh, CO2, so that the CO2 will go into the tubing for the, uh, the that exits the filter. And then when it comes out here, it'll be laden with CO2. Um, we we'll use the CO2 Pro on that, which has the compact unit here, and it's the one with the quick release, which is the game changer. So um, you can then, and just nice, neat little solenoid, you could know, depress that and pull it off. Um, so I'll have that under there with a bubble counter yeah. where we'll have inline CO2, so yeah. it's all hidden. Um, that's what we're going to do there. So I really CO2. like this idea of, uh, you know, you can just um, take it apart. i never seen like this, anything. That's the first right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah. And it has a little solenoid here. So not big uh, chunky one. Yeah, so not 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 big chunky one. And, you know, it can be attached in any position, side or top. Uh, so really cool design and uh, and great value too, right? So $150. dollars i am pretty sure you know you can't beat that price for CO2 regulator, um, professional yeah. CO2 regulator with solenoids. There's about two thousand of these now out in the yeah, okay. Australian cool. market, and um, they're, they're performing really, really, yeah. really, really well. Um, so that's what we do with CO2. And you have an inline diffuser. So inline, inline diffuser. the best part is. I kind of like even the other diffuser, you know, where you see it miss. Nice to see. Uh, it's nice to see. So depending on what kind of, uh, you know, what is your choice or what is your personal uh, thinking on the diffuser, you can use inline. Uh, inline is quite efficient. Um, you know, it, it mixes up CO2 really well. The inline um, comes in at the tube as it exits the canister yeah. filter. And then, and then when it comes, comes out here, it, it's laden with CO2. And yeah. nearly all of it's dissolved usually. Uh, if you have the, um, in tank ones, you make sure you put them as low as possible. And your bubbles will come up, and then you want them to the outlet of the um, uh, of the canister filter, then whooshing exactly. that and taking it through yeah. the tank so it doesn't just come to the top yeah. and, and, and disappear into the air. Yeah, so, um, so, what's that one? so this one is one of the premium products, Complete Pro. Now, uh, if you don't want to tweak your tank, or if you don't want you know that I want to play around with all the elements and I want to get the best and the best result. Uh, you can uh, you can use Complete Pro. It's quite concentrated, so uh, you will only need to use twice or thrice in a week. Or you can divide the portions and use, like like Steve said, uh, you can use multiple times, but less maybe 2.5 mil uh, per hundred uh, per hundred liter per hundred liter. Uh, you can do that. Or uh, why we created this? This is for people who just want each job one one bottle. Uh, I'm not going for comps. You know, I don't want to tweak anything. I just want an easy method. I want to come home just for some time. And sometimes you may say no problem. That's a product for them. Now, uh, once we have this tank full of plants, we will switch starter with this because we know uh, this is pretty much two or two point five more concentrated than the than, than the uh, than the starter. Uh, but right now the mass is not there, and we uh, still want to play with different elements. Uh, even though you switch with this, after that still you can control with the advanced series your NPK. You can control that iron. Uh, so this is a beautiful product for people who want still high-end result, want only one bottle, 
um, and you know don't have too much time in their in their life to maintain the tank. So that's for that premium product. Uh, it also inhibits the algae, so it will it will help prevent it. That's with all of our range starter also does that. Yeah. Um, and and plus, if your fertilizer is balanced, your plants will grow better. Your algae will not grow, right? So so it's a perfect product. And again, it's priced at thirty eight ninety five five hundred mil, but you have to use less uh, per week. All right, very good. Hope I explained everything in terms of fertilizer. And really looking forward for this tank to grow and you know have one of my feature tanks uh, that that you know i can I can create and be proud of uh, and uh, the way it's planted i will just go quickly through it the way uh the way how the driftwood flows down this is our more of a darker area and we're gonna add a cardinal tetra in there and you can imagine once they flow under the arch and go here we'll have those kind of shorts uh pretty uh, it will be pretty nice you know uh, to see those shorts they have a lot of red plants Elu magic, Elu magic lights gonna really make it, uh, you know, stand out. And uh, what I'm expecting is to see nice white rent colors in in couple of weeks time, and and a crazy growth, right? So we will keep you guys updated uh, with uh, with the growth of this tank. And I will be back in um, I will be back in Melbourne in a few weeks time, and we'll do another live session, another trimming session with Steve. Uh, and I'm really thankful to Nature's Aquarium, you know, to have this collaboration and we'll do many more natural scapes um, in the coming months and weeks. And if you guys have any comments, do do want to mention on my channel. And uh, thanks guys for tuning in and thanks to Steve uh, for having us here in Melbourne. And we'll see you guys again next time. Take care. Uh, screaming, whatever. Uh, so, well, you can do that well, Yeah, yeah, you can. Yeah, yeah. <laughs>